How do Apple's most powerful laptop chips compare? The M2 Max versus the M1 Max 16-inch MacBook Pros. Do we get a big enough boost in performance or not? Both of these machines have 1TB of storage, 32GB of RAM, and maxed out Max chips. And we have over 20 tests to run, starting off with a disk speed test. So we ran this test with a 4K file 16GB in size, uh, the M1 Max got 3282MB per second write and 4728 read, whereas the M2 Max got 3938MB per second write and 5,539 read. So the M2 Max was 19% faster in terms of the write speed and 17% faster in terms of the read speed. This is a pretty significant upgrade. As you probably know, the 512GB 40 and 60 inch models are affected by the slow SSD issue. Not only are the 1TB models not affected, but they're even faster uh, than the previous models. So what about the actual transfer speed? Would this be impacted by the faster SSD? Well, we have our external SSD here with two folders containing video files, uh, 18 gigabytes in total. And the M1 Max took 28 seconds to transfer this to its internal storage, whereas the M2 Max took uh, also 28 seconds. So yeah, pretty much the same. Now, the reason for this is that we weren't pushing the internal SSDs to their limits, as our external SSD only had speeds of around one gigabyte per second. So you will need an SSD of at least the internal speeds, if not even faster. Moving on to the CPU test, the M1 Max has a 10 core CPU, eight being performance cores and two being efficiency cores, whereas the M2 Max has 12 CPU cores, eight performance and four efficiency. And what's really interesting here is that the M2 Max also has higher clock speeds. 3.7 GHz on the single core compared to 3.2 on the M1 Max, so that's a huge difference, and then 3.3 on the multi-core compared to uh, 3.0. And the M1 Max got a score of 12,319, whereas the M2 Max got 14,745. So yes, the M2 Max was 19% faster. And by the way, the core count increase is 20%, so almost a one-to-one -one increase in CPU performance compared to the core count increase. So very, very impressive results here. But usually a higher performance also means more heat. So how do the temperatures compare? Well, the M1 Max uh, got as hot as 97 degrees. So this thing got very hot after five minutes of running Cinebench. But the M2 Max got even hotter, 101. Now, in our last video, we did actually show that the cooling system has actually changed from the M1 Max to the M2 Max, whereas the heatsink now only covers the chip as opposed to the memory modules as well. Likely one of the reasons for uh, these higher temps on the M2 Max model. So what about some real world usage? Well, we started off with Lightroom and we imported 228 images of various resolutions and file types uh, from different RAWs and TIFFs and also different sizes, up to 80 megapixels in size. So these images were just loads of them and also huge file sizes. The M1 Max took nine seconds to import these, whereas the M2 Max took eight seconds, so a tiny bit faster. And then we've applied a bunch of effects and filters to one image and then pasted that onto all the remaining 227 images. And this took the M1 Max one minute and two seconds compared to 57 seconds on the M2 Max. So once again, tiny bit faster. And then we exported all of these images, 228 in full quality, and this took the M1 Max four minutes and eight seconds. And here, the M2 Max was considerably faster, taking three minutes and three seconds. So 1.35 times faster. This is a big improvement. So what about compressed file sizes? Well, this time it took the M1 Max two minutes and 59 seconds, so faster, and the M2 Max two minutes and 11 seconds, 1.36 times faster. So there you go, a pretty big improvement here. So yeah, if you work in Lightroom, especially uh, with large files and just loads of them on a regular basis, then you should expect to see about a 1.35 times improvement by going with the M2 Max. So what about 3D rendering? Well, we start off with Blender by using the Cycles CPU render first uh, and the classroom scene. And this pushes all the CPU cores to their limits. And it took the M1 Max six minutes and 51 seconds to render the scene compared to five minutes and 46 seconds on the M2 Max. So 1.18 times faster on the newer model. A decent improvement, but I think the most impressive one was the battery life drop with the M1 Max dropping 6%, whereas the M2 Max only dropped 3%, half the battery life, while also achieving better performance. So if the CPU is that much better, what should we see in terms of the GPU? 
well, we not only have more cores, 38 instead of 32 GPU cores, but the GPU core scaling is also said to have been improved. So rendering the same Blender scene once again, but this time using the GPU, took 1 minute and 41 seconds on the M1 Max compared to 1 minute and 2 seconds on the M2 Max. So 1.62 times faster, even though the difference in cores is only 1.18 times greater on the M2 Max. So yeah, massive improvement here. And yes, we will be doing a gaming test uh, later in this video as well. Not only that, but the battery life drop was also very impressive with the M1 Max losing just 2% and the M2 Max losing just 1%. So once again, we get more performance with half the battery life usage on the newer model. And I should also mention that these are both uh, very healthy batteries. This is brand new at 100%. Uh, this has like 20 cycles at 99% uh, health, so these are both in very good condition. And then we also tested out Final Cut Pro with a 15 minute 4K project, one of our previous camera comparisons, and this was a very demanding timeline with loads of titles and effects, and the M1 Max took 9 minutes and 28 seconds to export, whereas the M2 Max took 8 minutes and 36 seconds, so 1.10 times faster. Definitely not a massive improvement here. In terms of the battery life drop, the M1 Max lost 13%, versus 11% on the M2 Max. So yeah, very small difference here. And that's likely because the CPU and the GPU were both pushed pretty hard. And then we also tested out ProRes to see if the ProRes media engines have received any improvements. So in Compressor, we imported a 4K 5-minute clip, H.265, and the M1 Max took 50 seconds to export, whereas the M2 Max took 50 seconds as well. So yeah, no improvements from the looks of it. Even when it came to the battery life, they both lost Nothing. Then we tried the same thing, but this time with a 6K 6-minute six clip, and this took 1 minute and 33 seconds on the M1 Max compared to the same on the M2 Max. And uh, yeah, same applied to the battery life drop, uh, none of them lost anything. So it's pretty safe to say that the ProRes media engines have received no improvements at all, so if you work in ProRes, Honestly, don't bother with the M2 Max at all. And then we also tested Logic Pro 10. We wanted to see how many tracks they could each play at the same time. The M1 Max was able to play 158 tracks compared to 165 on the M2 Max. So 4.43% more. Uh, once again, just don't bother with the M2 Max here as the improvements are not enough. And now for the fun one, gaming. We first tested World of Warcraft as it is one of the very few native Apple Silicon games, therefore that it would be the best way to test the true Apple Silicon performance. So we set both to a resolution of 2560 by 1600, fully maxed out settings, so ultra settings on both, and the M1 Max got between 124 to 146 frames per second, so 135 as the average, which is very very impressive as it is already taking full advantage of that 120Hz ProMotion display. And then the M2 Max got between 160 to 180 80 frames per second, so 170 as the average, which is a massive improvement, 26% higher than the M1 Max, with only an 18% increase in the number of cores. So yeah, very impressive. Now let's try one more game, and that is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Now this is not a native Apple Silicon game, but it does use metal, so it is fairly well optimized. So we ran the built-in benchmark at 2560 by 1600 once again, and the highest possible settings. The M1 Max got an average of 50 frames per second, pretty impressive. The M2 Max got 63, so yeah, a much smaller 8.62% improvement. So in conclusion, is it worth upgrading to the M2 Max if you already have the M1 Max? Well, I would say maybe. If your work involves the GPU mostly, uh, you get up to a 1.6 times improvement, which is a huge one, and then you can also get up to 96 gigs of RAM if you really need that much memory. Of course, the battery life is also better from our testing, it lost about half compared to the M1 Max and uh, quite a few tests. And then we also have things such as Wi-Fi 6E compared to Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.3, so you do get quite a few updates. And of course, the speakers, like we compared in our last video, are also better on the M2 Max compared to uh, the previous model. But definitely only upgrade if you absolutely need every bit of that extra performance. Anyone who's not upgrading from the M1 Max, uh, but from an older machine, then I would say it is absolutely worth it if your work needs the amount of performance that we have in this fairly thin and portable laptop. But for most people, I still think that getting an M1 Pro 14 inch or an M1 Max 24 core is still the best choice. And you can find some great deals if you tap on the YouTube shoppable cards down below. Stay tuned for our Mac mini coverage and do check out our previous MacBook videos as well, including some five interesting discoveries that we've made. I'm Daniel, this is Zenoftech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenoftech, signing out. Cheers.